Guys, welcome back to Backyard Steve. We're gonna jump right into it today. We are gonna take off the EG Civic steering wheel so we can change the ignition switch. The new ignition switch looks like this, the whole assembly. And it could be a little intimidating of a job if you don't know cars, but it is not a difficult job. We're gonna get into it right now. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove your horn. Now, let me keep in mind, this is a horn assembly. This is a base model car. Some cars have airbags and there's a slight difference. I will show you quickly. This base model car it has no tack. This base model car has a horn, no airbag, no airbag assembly. That said, there are two screws at the top up here. One about here, one about here. One screw in the bottom down here that you're gonna to wanna to remove. They're both small Phillips screws. If this were an airbag car, there is a piece on the side here and a piece on the side here you remove and then you remove the Torx bit screws on either side to remove the airbag assembly. Okay, now what you're gonna wanna do is lift it up and you're gonna wanna remove this power wire here, just like that. Next up, we're gonna wanna remove this nut. It is a 19 millimeter nut. So what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna put your ratchet on there, hold the steering wheel with one hand and back it off with the ratchet on the other side. Just like that. It comes off. Off goes the steering wheel, put it over there your horn assembly over there. If you're watching this video trying to figure out the orientation of the screws on the back of it, they look just like that. There's one right there, one right there. They're not on an angle, they are straight down. Next up with the multifunction switch, we're gonna pull this off by hand and remove those three Phillips screws. A couple things I wanna point out before we pull this off, make sure you undo the connectors on either side before you back it off. And there is needle bearings in around here. So when we pull this off, you wanna be very, very careful not to bump it or you will disturb the needle bearings and have a mess after. All right, now we've got the multifunction switch off. All four connectors are done. If you wanna get these off, all you have to do is on the side right here, push down on, it's gonna take quite a bit of pressure. You push down and pull this back and that's it on all four of them. Next up is the switch itself. So you can unplug it underneath here and I'll show you that in a second. Now to get these safety bits off, what you're gonna wanna do is use a hammer and chisel or a hammer and screwdriver, and you're gonna bang on it on an angle counterclockwise. I'll try and get a video of it. So what you wanna do, I'm gonna try and do this one handed, is you're gonna wanna put the screwdriver on an angle like that, right? and then you're gonna bang on it counterclockwise. Once you crack it fairly loose, you can use your fingers to uh, get the safety bit out. I'll show you when I get it out here. Just like that, the safety bit is out. You can see where I hit it with the hammer and the punch, or sorry, the hammer and chisel. Punch right there. And all you do is you hit it on an angle and back it off counterclockwise. One right there and one right there. Next thing we wanna do is yours, this will actually be still screwed to yours, I took that out. But the next thing you wanna do is we need to follow these wires under the dash. And in order to do that, we need to remove this screw, this screw, this screw, which are all Phillips screws. Okay, now that you have the lower panel off, you're gonna to wanna to follow the wires in. So here's our switch, goes all the way up and we're gonna undo this one here, same deal. We're gonna push on this bottom tab right here, pull it towards us, and the same up here. We're gonna follow it all the way up here, push on the tab again, and pull it towards us. Just like that. And pull this out, this tab. So this one I can't show you, but you can see on this one, how it's shaped. You just squeeze the ends and pull it towards you. And out it comes, just like that. Now on how it works, let's show you guys how the ignition switch actually works. This is your steering wheel lock here. This pin, when the steering or ignition switch is not in a certain position, this goes up and is actually inside of here. So you have a male and female end. And that's what locks your steering wheel, right? You put your key in here, you turn it on the other side, it turns the ignition switch and it comes 
through there. So this piece is all one inside here. So when you turn the key, this shaft turns, turns that, supplies power, signal to your actuator on your starter, and it fires up. Better example would be on the new one. See how this is all screwed together? That's how yours will look in the car unless you've taken the switch off. But if you turn the key back, sort of. Hold on. Or is the key all the way back? No. Hold on, this is hard with one hand. You turn the key all the way back, you can see the actuator move a little bit. And when I pull the key out, that pin should poke up and would go into the steering shaft, just like that. And that's why you can't turn your steering wheel when it's locked. That's why sometimes you gotta rock your steering wheel back and forth to get your key to turn. So and then the key goes in, goes down, and you can turn your steering wheel. All right, to put this back on, we're gonna go all in reverse. We're gonna put this on first, and then we're gonna put the cap on top. And here's the cap. And it comes with, instead of having the flat ones we had on top, it actually comes with a regular bolt style that'll go on there and make it easier to install. Okay, so I used a wrench, I tightened up the two eight mil bolts on there. I'm gonna reach down, I'm gonna plug these back into where we unplugged them from before, under there, and I'm gonna put the plate back in with the three screws. Something to note, when you do put your plate back in, the first piece that goes in, you put these in on the bottom, the tabs, and then you push the plate up and they put your Phillips screw in. So tab and then up. So we got the plate back on the bottom here. Next, we're gonna put our multifunction switch back in. It's just gonna go, it's gonna slide right over top here. And before we get it all the way on there, we're gonna plug in our four connectors and then we'll replace our three Phillips screws. And next up, we're gonna replace our signal stopper. So that, you wanna make sure your orientation's right and it slides right over top. Now, the way this works is when you signal, that tab comes out and then as you turn your steering wheel, this goes up, ticks, and it, I'm not strong enough with the finger, but goes up, cancels that, and your steering wheel, or sorry, your light cancels, just like that. That back on now. Next up, we're going to put uh, our covers back on. You guys actually didn't see me to take these off in the beginning, I forgot to show you. Uh, but yeah, just one on the bottom, one on the top, they snap together on the sides, and they have the Phillips screws through the bottom. So again, here's the bottom one, Phillips screw there, Phillips screw there, and Phillips screw there and it just sits on there like that. Something I think I'll point out maybe worthwhile before we put this together is this is the bottom one this is the top one this top one will sit on here like this now what you're looking for is on the side if I can do this see that tab this is not going well see that tab right there and see the tab right there those are the male ends, see the female ends? So those are going to snap on there, just like that. So the top one physically has no screws holding it in, it just snaps in place. The bottom one has the screws. So a lot of times, because you have these alignment dowels that go there, I'll take the top one and I'll set it there first, and then I'll put the bottom one on, snap it to place, and then I'll screw it in. Your screws will, that I just dropped between the seat and the console, your screws actually screw into your existing switch. So that's what kind of what holds everything together. Alrighty, so we got our one, two, and three Phillips screws in. Time to put the steering wheel back on. So just slide it over the spline, make sure it's aligned with your wheels. It might be off a little bit, you might have to take it off and adjust it, but assuming your steering, steering wheels were straight when you took it off, it should be good. So your 19 mil nut back on. Tighten it up, make sure you use the manufacturer's torque specs because you don't want any problems. Now, here's the thing. I'm not going to tighten this because I want to put a different steering wheel on, but you're going to tighten this and you're going to put your airbag or sorry, your horn assembly on place and you're going to plug it in back right there. Put it on, put your Phillips screw back here, back here, and under here. That's it guys on replacing the ignition tumbler switch in your EG 92 to 95. Honda Civic. For more tips, make sure you guys drop a subscribe so you don't want to miss anything. Or maybe you do. I don't know. It's up to you. But there is definitely more to come. Thanks for watching. Hey, 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 hey. Okay.